Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, right here, temporarily, and I'll talk a little bit more more than that here in a second, on Faith Talk 99.5, our normal station of 96.5 will carry this show tomorrow at the same time on Sunday, so if you're hearing this on Sunday, this is pre-recorded. This is live Geek Talk Radio, I'm your host Shane Stacks, Uh, uh, this is a journey into the things we love, a weekly, weekly geeky show that I love to do and I hope that people are loving listening to it i know i'm getting good feedback so uh i'm glad that people like it out there listen if you want to call in this is this is talk radio if you're listening on saturday uh 99.5 and you're not listening on sunday or on the podcast or on krypton radio you can call in live at 501-823-0965 that's 501-823-0965 or you can tweet me and i monitor my twitter if some people are, are more comfortable tweeting than calling at Shane Plays. That's Shane like my name Shane and Plays like I like to play stuff. Shane Plays. So you can always go, uh, I do this every week, to ShanePlays.com. And one guy out there one time, was he's like, man, I can't find your site. He thought I was saying Shane's Place, like my place. No, it's Shane Plays. Uh, you can go to ShanePlays.com and there's always show notes there with uh, notes and links for today's show. So if you miss something or if you want to know more, you can go there. So go to shameplays.com. Listen, this show does have sponsors. Very blessed to have them. Very happy to have them. Uh, but it, they don't pay all the bills. I bootstrap some of it. And I also get some help with, uh, with uh, Patreon. People who listen to the show will actually donate per show, as little as a dollar per show, on Patreon. So you can go to patreon.com slash shameplays. That link is also on shameplays.com. Uh, you don't have to donate that way. You can if you want to. So I'm trying to make this a blend of sponsors and also community support. So if you like this kind of thing and want to see it keep going, I, I mean, we're not it's not going away anytime soon. I'm just saying if you like it and want to support it, then you're welcome to it at patreon.com slash uh, same place. This show always goes out as a blog or not as a blog, as a podcast within a day or two. I'm thinking about starting to push it out on Monday, but but um I've uh, been pushing out Saturday, Sunday, uh, you know, so within the next couple of days it goes out and you can find that on my blog at shameplays.com, on iTunes, on Stitcher, other fine uh, podcast directories out there. Playing around, maybe putting it out on SoundCloud. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet or not. And last, we're always carried a week delayed. And we're working on getting it live. Gene Turnbow from Krypton Radio is the founder and uh, program manager for Krypton Radio is working on getting it live. But right now it's delayed a week uh, on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. KryptonRadio.com. Now, um, let me tell you about the, sta- the, the station change, temporary station change that's been going on right now dude, uh, with football. And then I've got... Uh, Greg Wilson, a.k.a. Arvin Elrond, is waiting in the wings to help me through the first segment, and he's going to help set up the rest of the show. But let me tell you about the temporary station change. Right now, we are temporarily on 99.5 Faith Talk. So if you're listening to 99.5 Faith Talk, you say, what the heck, Shane plays Geek Talk Radio. Yeah, this is temporary. I'm normally on 96.5 FM, The Answer. But due to the Washita Baptist football schedule, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm temporarily on Faith Talk. Uh, on Saturdays, my normal time is Saturdays at, at one uh, on ninety six five. But through November fifteenth, I'm on ninety nine five, and then the show plays again, pre recorded on my normal station ninety six five FM, um, the answer uh, on Sundays. So that's that's through November fourteenth. So you know, uh, don't be worried. Uh, you know, and, and you know, if you're like, hey, I wouldn't have heard the show otherwise. I like it, great. If you're like, whoa, uh, this isn't my normal format, man. It, you know, uh, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. So uh, anyway, but I hope you like the show regardless. So uh, move, moving forward, I've got uh, Gregory Wilson, a.k.a. Arvin Elleron, on the line with me. Uh, Greg has been on the show before. He, ha- he was a full guest. He, he's a Twitcher, uh, and he, he actually uh, is a special uh, Twitch caster for goodoldgames.com now, as well as his own channel, and he's an author and other things. So, so Arvin Elleron, a.k.a. Gregory Wilson, are you with me, sir? I am with you. Hi, Shane. Good Man, it is great to talk to you, buddy. 
So always. Yeah, the last time I caught your Twitch, you were doing Alpha Protocol, and I was really yeah. enjoying watching that. And I saw a little bit of your good old game Star Trek 25th anniversary. So congratulations mm-hmm. on that partnership with Good Old Games. Thank you. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, it kind of came out of nowhere, actually, because I had applied. One of my viewers uh, had told me about it, and I applied for it, oh, gosh, I don't know, six, seven months ago, maybe, or more. And so I got this email, and they were like, hey, you know, we were just, I, I literally had no idea what I was reading for the first two lines. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember what I did that. And they, <laughs> How they funny. Me in. So, yeah. yeah, I run a show called Pen and Pixels over there every Tuesday about uh, story and narrative and games. And, yeah, really good people over there. So it's it's been good sort of expansion of the audience for my own channel. Good. Well, g- good for you. So, uh, yeah, I watched Alpha Protocol, and I saw you were doing um – uh, you occasionally do a, a fighting fantasy or, or kind of game book, one of those choose your own event where you say where chat is the hero and you let chat make That's the right. decisions. Where chat so is the hero. Yep. Chat is the hero. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's we're going to do a little bit of news. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to let you set up uh, our guests for today, uh, which okay. you're closely associated with. And uh, thanks yep. so much for being with us for the first part of the show. Uh, and just yep. real quick, so people don't know, or so people don't forget, Arv, uh, in addition to be on Twitch, you can go to twitch.com slash Arvin Elrond. Uh, Arv also is a writer. He's got a book out called The Third Sign. Um, and then I think you've got a sequel to that and some graphic novels floating around. Is is that not correct? Right. So I have a graphic novel, Icarus, which should be coming out very soon, I hope, uh, next couple of months. And then I have a new series coming out next year, which we'll have more discussion of briefly, uh, from the Greenwood Group that's starting next year. Okay. Uh, and sequels to the third sign, hopefully down the line. But, um, okay. but those other ones are definitely happening. So. Okay. Well, I, I just have to say, no matter what happens, our licks are cool from the third sign. <laughs> that, they are, everyone tells me that, and yeah. yes, I've heard that. Uh, they are like... Know, I, I think they are, too. <laughs> they are like, they're, and they're not exactly like this, but they're kind of like minotaurs that have this like incredibly great code of honor. So, yes. uh, yeah, that's not exactly, I don't want to diminish what they are, but just to, to elevate. No, you're right. they're, they're, yeah. yeah. They have a sense of honor and, uh, they have the grace of ballerinas. I like to say, uh, the baller, grace. balletic grace with a Klingon code of honor. So, okay. and they look like minotaurs. That, 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 right. That's your art. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's, uh, get to the news really quick. Uh, and okay. then, and then Ed and Chris are already waiting in the wings. So, um, so I don't want to I don't want to take too long on the news here, but uh, go ahead and key. Is are our, our guys working hard today, Zach? Right, there they go. Yeah, love those guys working on Saturday. So got some news items here really quick. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Don Miller of Tennessee. He won the Dungeons and Dragons Dice Masters Battle for Faerun two player starter set giveaway that I did on the Shame Plays Facebook page. So thanks, uh, Don. Yeah. Uh, pre and people, there's the Shane Plays Facebook page, and I do do giveaways, so go check it out. Um, all right, did you? I gotta know, Arv. I survived. I'm gonna get a T-shirt that says this. I survived the Great Star Wars Advance Ticket Internet Meltdown of 2015. Did you? <laughs> no, I didn't, because I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see it as soon as I possibly can. Yeah. But there's no way that tickets, yeah. I, I heard about that, and oh god. Yeah. Well, I I predicted last <laughs> week with my guest, he, uh, Steve Chenault of Troll Lord Games. We were both like the internet's going to die, and it did. Uh, but I, I managed. Uh, uh, I hung in there, and I got two tickets. Uh, I don't usually do opening night, but I'm going to this time. Um, my wife and I are going, so I, it took about 30 minutes, but we finally got them through MovieTickets.com. And Fandango, forget it. Fandango went down in flames, so oh, yeah. I, I wasn't able to do anything with them. All right, and then we've got uh, we got some news, uh, real quick. I, I think what what Zach. The news I'm about to share, what would Doc Brown say about this news? What would he say? The, the news that happened this week. Doc Brown from Back to the Future, what would he say? What would his... Great Scott! Yep. You know where I'm going with this, Arb. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Wednesday, October 21st, 2015 officially all of back to the future is now in the past yep it's gone it's yep. gone there's no more yep i loved it but i'll <laughs> tell you what i'm a geek or i think that's well established you're a geek i actually got kind of tired of all the back to the future references over the past week or so i don't know if you well, did or you not know, huh the funny thing about it is i have to say I, I don't know i mean yeah it sure was all over the place there were lots of back to the future game playthroughs too but I don't know about you, Back to the Future, the first movie was so much better to me than any of the others. Right. I remember, I mean, I remembered Back to the Future, I'm like, oh yeah, and then that terrible third one. I was like, it's okay, but 
Back to the Future Man was great, the first movie, and that's that's it. It does not stand out in my mind like War Games or like... Oh, sure, I yeah, know, even no. Red, even Red Dawn, you know, like other 80s movies that I remember really was a never-ending story. That stuff kind of sticks with me, but Back to the Future I liked, but I wasn't like, Josh, this is the most important, so... Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't the target audience, I think. All right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I wish I could spend more time on that. I, Back to the Future 2 and 3 rode on the coattails of Back to the Future 1. Totally. For totally. for the cultural cachet that they have. But that, right. you know, uh, that that 15 or 20 minutes when they're in the future and you're seeing all the technological innovations, I think really made an impression on people. So, you know, the hoverboards. And the cl- yeah. So, and by the way, do you have your hoverboard? Because I don't think I have. Yeah. Mine. No, that, that's the joke is, is like, and my, and my tweet of the day, or actually the tweet of the week I'll do at the end of the show actually references that. But anyway, all right, one last news item, and then we got to press on. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend much time on this one. Supergirl, the TV series, does start this week. Or this coming mm-hmm. week, Monday, October 26th, at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on CBS. I think that's weird that they're doing it at 7.30 or 8.30 and not at the top of the hour. Yeah. But yeah. It, it looks like they're using the Big Bang Theory to lead into it. So that's that's best. Uh, yeah, okay. that's best I can tell. Okay, so let's introduce our guests. They're actually all waiting on hold, and I still have a break to get through. So let's let's uh, introduce us to the Ed Greenwood group there, uh, Arv, and, and then we will press on with, with those fine fellows. Sounds good. With pleasure. Yeah, and I think I'm going to be introducing them and then stepping off and letting you speak for them. Um, yeah, these guys are so. The Ed Greenwood Group is a new publishing company, and it is the uh, it is the brainchild originally of Ed Greenwood. For those of you who don't the know, Ed the Ed Greenwood, the Ed Greenwood. The Ed Greenwood. I was going to say, if you don't know who this is, then really, I don't why are you listening to the show? show? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But Ed Greenwood is the creator, of course, of the Forgotten Realms, uh, which is the main setting in which D&D, Dungeons & Dragons, has been set for decades now. Um, and actually, this is the 50th year, uh, 50th anniversary of the first story that he wrote in those realms. Wow. Uh, he is an enormous uh, best-selling author, uh, one of the best-selling authors in Canadian history, actually. Well, now, I have to correct you there, guy. Arv. He's not enormous. Yeah. He's actually kind of thin. Oh, well, you know I'm what sorry. I mean. Da, da, da. Yeah, no, he's you huge. Know, that's, that's yeah, he's huge. Hanging, huge. Little hanging fruit. Yeah. No, he's, a, no, he's, a, he's big time in this field. And, um, yeah, so Ed uh, started a publishing company. It is a transmedia company, so it's not just publishing. It actually involves, there's a whole audio wing. There's a uh, there's a, a uh, artifact wing where they, like, literally create, like, artisanal creations of various types and kinds. And he's assembled this uh, incredible group of authors. Um, and uh, the first setting, Helma is actually launching as of October 31st, I believe. Um, I just, I have to say that, Helma. I love it. Helma. Helma. It is, yeah. yeah. And it really, it is pretty, it is pretty cool. I'll let him explain it in his own okay. inimitable way. But, um, but uh, so Helma is launching, and he has a couple of authors uh, after his first book. And then next year, he will be introducing, uh, we'll have the second setting going live, which is currently codenamed Pony Island Adventures. That is not what the ultimate code name is, but thank God. It's not <laughs> the ultimate code. Um, but uh, okay. you guys know. Um, but uh, but that's that's it. And I my okay. book, uh, I'm going to be the second author after his first book introducing that one. So in all, I think there are something like 12 settings at least that he's going to be introducing from the Wow. So it, well, I know I read big, something. enormous venture. It's so, like a yeah. book a month for... 80 months or something a bit but anyway let me uh i hate to do this i greg is so good to talk to you i want to i want to uh kind of move the show forward and give ed greenwood and chris a jackson and do you know i want to make sure i'm spelling this or saying this or eric scott dubai or is it to be do you happen to know to be eric scott eric scott to be and those guys chris and eric are both great authors and good friends as is Ed. so yeah eric got to be and chris jackson yep all right well arv i we're going to paint a picture here you are going to bow uh, with a flourish, and then in a in a very uh, a very deft move, you're just going to disappear from view, and we're like, wow! I've already done so. You can't see it, but yeah. it just happened. <laughs> yeah, that was deft, man. All right, we'll catch you on uh, we'll catch you on your Twitch streams, Twitch streams, and on in your books. Greg, uh, Greg, aka Arvin Elrond, thanks so much uh, for introducing all this, and we are going to move forward. We'll be taking a break here in a second, and then we'll be talking with Ed Greenwood, Chris A. Jackson, and Eric Scott. To be so, Greg. Thanks so much, and have a great weekend. Shane, same to you. My pleasure as always. Thanks. Okay. Now, do we, uh, Zach? Do we? Are Ed, Chris, and Eric? Are they on the line right now? Okay, uh, guys, say hi real quick, and then we're going to take a break, and then we'll, after the break, we'll get into the meat of it. First of all, welcome so much to Shane Plays, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah that that sounded like Ed. I'm pretty sure That's that was Ed. Ed. Yeah. Hi. Hey, 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 Ed. Chris, do we have you? 
Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm right here. Okay. And then and then Eric Scott Dubby. Do we have you? Dubby. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, Greg had it right. It's uh, Dubby or not Dubby. Dubby or not Dubby. That is the question. <laughs> da da da. All right. I love it. Well, what, listen, we're gonna take a break, guys. Uh, and when we come back. We're going to be talking about uh, Ed Greenwood Group, and we are going to be talking about the new series, Hell Mall, that you guys are all involved with. want to let people know real quick, don't forget tonight, at the Red Room, if you happen to be in the Little Rock area, uh, from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m., there's uh, the Monsters of Todd 2, which is a bunch of local bands getting together, and they're raising money uh, for the American Cancer Society and also the family of my friend Todd Mills, who passed away from cancer a couple of years ago. Uh, so this was a very successful fundraiser last year. They're doing and getting in this year. The Rev Room, tons of local bands. I'll be there for a little while. It's not really my scene anymore, but I love these guys, and I love my friend Todd, and I will be there helping out with the silent auction. So, uh, Zach, take us to a break, and when we come back, it's going to be more Ed Greenwood, Chris A. Jackson, and Eric Scott DeBee on Shane Plays Radio. Megawars.net. The classic online space strategy game is returned, bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. Megawars.net. Privately owned and licensed by the Arkansas State Police, Rock City Alarm Company has been in business since 1996, specializing in sales, installation, servicing, and monitoring of burglar alarms and fire alarms for the state of Arkansas. Rock City Alarm provides service for residential and commercial alarms and now provides cellular monitoring with remote arm and disarm. Just call John Hardiman at 501-541-8747. That's John Hardiman at 501-541-8747. JLM Tree Servicing can take care of your tree servicing needs. Contact them at 501-351-7714, online at jlmservicing.com, and on Facebook. Do you have limbs touching the roof or killing your grass with too much shade? Leaves collecting in the pool or gutters? Need to remove that unsightly dead tree? JLM Servicing is insured provides free estimates, serves all of Central Arkansas, and doesn't collect payment until job well done. JLM Tree Servicing, 501-351-7714. Find them online at jlmservicing.com or on Facebook. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash shaneplays. Hey, and we're back on uh, Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. We have some great guests today. Get back to them in just one moment. Just want to remind people that due to a temporary station change due to football schedules, we are a 99.5 Faith Talk. So if you're like, hey, what's uh, Geek Talk Radio doing on 99.5 Faith Talk? That's why. Uh, and we will replay pre-recorded tomorrow on our normal station of 96.5 FM the answer at one o'clock on Sunday. So uh, and now now, as they say, back to the show we have. And this is just so exciting. Really glad to have all three of them on. Um, we have Ed Greenwood. Yes, that Ed Greenwood, uh, fantasy author extraordinaire, uh, award winning gamer and also the creator of a little thing called the Forgotten Realms. And if you don't know what that is and you're listening to this show, uh, sit down and and uh, and sit around the fire and listen uh, to the story. We're not talking about the Forgotten Realms today, but you need to be listening to the cool stuff that they're doing now. Um, we also have Chris A. Jackson and Eric Scott DeBee, and they're part of a uh, the the Ed Greenwood group, uh, a, a, a very cool group called the Sessorium, if you go to the Edverse website and, and look at all that. And what I'm going to do now, Ed, I have to just acknowledge your role in the Forgotten Realms. I don't want to spend the whole show on that because we're here to talk about Helmaw. But you know, you, you created personally the Forgotten Realms. I mean, we're talking about Sword Coast, Waterdeep, uh, you know, Luskin, uh, uh, Neverwinter, uh, you know, uh, Dritz de Orden came out of this. You know, all, all these the huge, the Harpers, all, all this, this huge, rich game world. You created it 50 years ago for your own personal use. Yes. Yes. I did. And, and I'm it, still creating it every day. Every day. Uh, and, and, and actually, I just got uh, the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide 
which is the oh, new supplement. Oh, you got it already. Huh? It hasn't reached me yet. Yeah, it, my, my friendly local game store got it in yesterday. And what's funny, uh, you know the new D&D uh, books, they always have kind of a funny disclaimer on the, on the credits page. Mm-hmm. Well, the disclaimer basically says, you know, if you, and it talks about all these horrible things that can happen in the realms, you know, if you run into this or scimitar wielding drow or anything with twin arrows in the name, you know, all, all these funny things. And it says, blame your DM. And then it says, if you can't blame your DM, blame Ed Greenwood. So the whole book is blamed <laughs> on you. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, you know, scapegoat. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's so, a role I'm getting better at every day. Every day. So anyway, yeah. And then, of course, you created Elminster. Um, you know, the, the, the wizard that, you know, once again, anybody who probably is even tangentially aware of D&D and the Forgotten Realms is, is aware of Elminster. So, uh, you know, so I, I have to acknowledge your role in that. Uh, you know, there's people out there listening that, you know, they're, they're probably not aware of these other things you're doing with the Ed Greenwood group. So we've got to acknowledge that. Uh, what an achievement. I mean, that's, I would say that's probably the, the strongest, most vibrant game setting that's out, you know, and then it's gone on to become a setting in its own right for, you know, Fanthers games based, you know, it's, it's huge. So uh, I just have to ask in your wildest dreams, would you have ever thought, and I know you've been asked this before, but I have to, I, would you have ever thought it would get that big when you started playing with it 50 years ago? No, no. I, I thought it would just be one of the, you know, TSR worlds as they were then. Um, and that it would get a few, um, years in the sun and if we uh if we design things right it would become something that dungeon masters who loved it could use forever and ever and i i have to say that um it has succeeded in large part because um lots of gamers have embraced it including um one of my fellow guests eric who who designed neverwinter um this last time around when neverwinter was um its own sort of sub campaign setting and it's contributions like that that keep the realms alive, keep it feeling like a real place, so it it keeps going for all of us. Well, I tell you, when it when you re, you know uh, about three quarters of the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide is nothing but setting, you know, and talking yes. about the peoples and the places. It's rich. I mean, you oh, know, yes, yeah, yes. it's it's I, very. I know rich. something of what's in it. <laughs> yeah, don't, I, don't I, I imagine you do. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you do. So, uh, and it's well done. I I love the picture. Uh, there's a picture in there of it's like I think four kids sitting around a wizard and they look like kids from our world and it, and he looks very Elminster-ish and his pipe is creating his pipe smoke is creating like a knight in armor or something like that I, I love that picture so um, and that 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 picture I think captures the realms yes. sure yeah yes. it's it's great yeah. yeah I did a double take I was like those are kids from our world. You know, I had to look. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, those are kids from our world. I see what they're doing with this. So very nicely done. Okay, if there's anything that any of you, Ed, Chris, or Eric, want to mention on the Forgotten Realms before we move on to Hellmall, feel free. I just, you know, I want to make sure that that's acknowledged, but I don't want to spend the whole show there. So if y'all have anything that you want to mention, you know, feel free at this time. Well, I was going to mm. say, you're describing that picture of the pipe smoke creating the night and i'm pretty sure that happened at gen con a couple of years ago when ed ran a game for me so ah so it's a picture it's a photograph <laughs> those are those are uh, real those are based on real life okay like this setting is very very vibrant and i think that um has good things to suggest about the forthcoming uh and greenwood uh settings right which there's at least two I know of, one of Hellmall, the other one is codenamed Pony Island Adventures, and it sounds like even more after that. Now, just so I know, was that I'm Eric? You're going to be so excited. Oh, my gosh. Really good. Now, is this Eric <laughs> speaking? I just want to make sure I'm... Yes. Okay, I thought Sorry. so. Okay. All right. I thought so, but I wasn't totally sure. All right. Well, the Forgotten Realms is cool. Uh, I lost myself for a couple of hours in the in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, or SCAG, as I'm beginning to affectionately refer to it, even though that doesn't sound nice on the surface, but it, it's just a great acronym. Uh, anyway, pressing on, uh, what I'd love to do is for Ed, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Ed, Ed Greenwood group and then, and then kind of set the stage for this new series that is launching next, next Saturday on Halloween, actually. Okay, here we go. The Ed Greenwood Group, immodestly named, uh, but it's actually a sensorium of equals. We have over 200 people in it already now, 
and not just authors. We have artists, we have artisans, we have um, voice actors. We're going to be doing music. They're musicians. It, it is a collection of equals who are going to collaborate in shared settings. At the moment, we have 15 shared settings ready. Uh, oh, my goodness. Go. Yeah. <laughs> not all at once. <laughs> that's the other thing that's different about the Ed Greenwood Group. This is not like a traditional publisher where something comes out and after a few months it's out of print. These things will be available forever. So if you're looking at all 15 settings at once when we get going and thinking, my wallet can't do 15 settings at once, oh, no, don't worry. You can wait. You will not miss out by not jumping in right that month. Okay? But there are 15 shared worlds in which everybody who collaborates in them is an equal. Each, each setting has a lore guardian and an art director, so we can keep things consistent. But everybody gets to add their bit and to tell their stories in these worlds. Um, the first setting is called Helma. And that launches with my novel, Your World is Doomed. Your World is Doomed. Uh, Ed, if on you, Halloween. On Halloween. Okay. So this is and, Hell Maw. H-E-L-L-M-A-W, yeah, like a maw, like a mouth. Yeah, Hell Maw, which is demons on our modern real-world Earth. They have been lurking among us for centuries, thousands of years in some cases, but a whole bunch of them have flooded into Earth very recently, and we're telling their stories. The second novel is Dragon Dreams by a certain Chris A. Jackson. Who we happen to have on the phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and the third novel is Blind Justice by Eric Scott to be, whom we also <laughs> just happens. <laughs> just so happens to be with us on the and, and you know, I, I want to take this time and mention that, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Jackson and Mr. To be, you know, they have a bibliography of their own right. I mean, you know, I, I, if you go, uh, if you go to shameplays.com, I've listed on, in the show notes links for all of you. And, uh, you know, uh, Ed, obviously you're, you know, an established author, well-known name. Uh, you know, Mr. Jackson, and Mr. To be, you, you guys have, have got several notches on your belt as well. Uh, you know, so I just go ahead and take a moment and, you know, kind of share with people, uh, you know, uh, starting with Chris and then, Eric, I'll let you follow up and kind of tell people maybe kind of the books you've already written. Um, well, I kind of got into um, writing through the back door. I started out self-publishing. and um, Now, this is I Chris, correct? About, yeah, this is okay. Chris. And um, I have currently about um, 15 um, novels published. In, in uh, The majority of those are self-published, but I've recently been uh, writing for uh, Canadian Small Press, uh, Dragon Moon Press. I had a four-book series um, with them, a uh, nautical fantasy series that won uh, some, um, some awards through um, um, a national magazine. Um, so they were national awards. Um, I won, won three first place um, awards for that, which has never been done before. So I was pretty Excellent. pleased with that. And that kind of gave me the, the chops to step up and uh, pitch to um, uh, another uh, gaming publisher, uh, Paizo Publishing. Uh -huh. um, and uh, they didn't have anything in their um, world being, being written uh, uh, in the nautical milieu. So uh, having, you know, 30-something years of, of sailing under my belt and the other series under my belt so I could prove that I could write about it coherently, uh -huh. um, I pitched to them, and I'm, I'm working on a nautical and other books through, the, through them. So I've, I've got my um, third one coming out through them in January. And that's and, set in the uh, Pathfinder game world, that's in correct? Pathfinder, yeah. I didn't yeah. want to drop the other uh, role-playing <laughs> game name there, but I did. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I did it. I, I dropped it, so sorry. Right. Uh, no, okay. that's okay. Okay. So, uh, well, you know, and you mentioned all the nautical. Now, my research on you, you either you either live on a boat in the in the uh, in the Caribbean, or you spend a lot of time there. Am I am I correct? I, I am on it as we speak. Yes. That is too cool. Um, well. It's not in the Caribbean right now, but it's kind of pointed that direction. Um, I'm currently in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, my wife and I quit perfectly good jobs in 2009 to go sailing and never went back. So. Well, that's, and you can, and, you know, uh, that's great that you can live that way and, and continue your, your writing career. So, yeah. Yeah, and eat. That's and eat, right. yeah. That's, well, I mean, you could just, you know, you can just fish, right? You can just put, <laughs> catch a fish. Well, it's not quite that easy, you know. Okay. <laughs> but, All right. Uh, 
But yeah, we uh, we live pretty close to the bone. I don't have a lot of expenses, you know, no debt and stuff like that. So as long as I can keep sailing and writing and eating, I'm good. All right. Well, good. You you will keep finding your path, as it were. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So, and then, right. and then um, so I was doing gaming conventions and stuff like that, and uh, and I've gotten some um, other publications through small small smaller gaming companies, uh, Privateer Press and um, Catalyst. I have a short story through in uh, Shadowrun. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I love the Shadowrun setting, so that's great. Yeah, yeah, I love the setting. The setting is just awesome. Yeah. And um, and then um, Ed walks up to me a, a couple of years ago with this non-disclosure agreement and says, I have something to speak to you about. <laughs> and uh, Say that again. Do it like that again. I have something to speak to you about. <laughs> I love that. All right. And, then, and that was all I think exactly what he said. I need you to sign this. Yeah. Don't ask what it's about. And you signed and it. And I did. <laughs> I love and, it. Uh, and so it was really serendipitous because – I happened to have a manuscript that was near completion that um, I really didn't know where I was going to market it to. Uh, it was a contemporary fantasy. And he throws the Helma idea at me. I was like, Ed, I've got a book for you. And so we hashed it out and worked out the, the, the fixes, the tweaks that would make it Helma, and it works beautifully. So that's where that's, Dragon Dreams came from. That That's fantastic. So, uh, and, and remind us of the name of, of now Ed's Helma book, that kicks it all off is your world is doomed. And then, yes. and your in the name of your Helmall book is what? Dragon dreams, dragon dreams. Okay. So, uh, thanks for Chris. Now moving over to Eric, Eric, why don't you, uh, paint us a, a picture of, of some of your publishing history and then tell us a little bit about your involvement with Helmall. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, I wrote five forgotten realms novels. The first one came out in December, 2005. And um, some of them are standalone and some of them are connected. Uh, I wrote the Shadowbane series, uh, which is about a, uh, a rogue-turned-paladin of uh, Helm, who was dead at the time. So it was kind of a... It, it's a complicated exploration of faith and justice and vengeance. And I think you'll I like see it. that that's the theme of my work as I go forward. I like that. Um, uh, Wizards has kind of stepped away from publishing, well, much of anything. Uh, they have just a few novels coming out every year, and I did not make that cut, apparently. Ah. So I have moved to publishing my own stuff. Um, my novel, Shadow of the Winter King, came out last year. It's a kind of post-apocalyptic fantasy story. Okay. I, I, tell, I describe it to people as Game of Thrones meets Fallout. Ooh. But it's, it's set in this world where magic has destroyed the environment and uh, people are fighting off these magic twisted barbarians. It's, it's really cool. I like. So and, uh, is, also, since it's got a fallout, since your elevator pitch is uh, Game of Thrones meets Fallout, do the, is the currency bottle caps? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Okay. That would uh, that would be too telling. Okay. That would be like, right. um, because it, it's much farther in the future from uh, the previous world. So okay. There's, there's not a lot left from the previous world, although the things that are left are these magical relics that people carry around, and, it, and that's the primary way that people have magical abilities. I see. They use these these enchanted items, basically. Ah, sounds cool. And then the. Uh, the other novel I, I came out with was called Scourge of the Realm, which sounds like a Forgotten Realms novel. And it's, it's written in that sort of spirit, but it's it's my own, I see. Um, entirely my own creation. And then you also and, do um, some... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and interrupt you. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I just... I can talk a lot about my work because I yeah. write a lot. Yeah. Well, you... um, the sequel to uh, Shadow of the Witch King is coming out early next year. It's called um, Shield of Summer Prince. Um, I think there will be four books in that series, although I might go on farther. We'll see. Okay. So, all right. Well, uh, yeah, the, the point I was, you know, wanting people to get is that, you know, all of you are, are well-established authors in your own right. Uh, you know, and now there's this exciting new series coming out called Hellmaw under the Ed Greenwood group starts this Saturday, uh, October 31st. And one of the unique things about this, I want to touch on this and then we're going to hit a break and we come back. We'll talk more about Helmaw is, uh, there's a book every month for is it like 80 something months or uh, Ed, can you touch on that a little bit? Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> these three books come out, um, the three books from, by the three of us who are here, um, come out before the end of the year, and then starting in January, 
there will be one book a month from Helma, and then in August we will add a novel a month from Pony Island, and then we'll add a third setting in December of 2016, Folklore of the Affliction, and then we'll go on adding settings on top, like a layer cake, and each month there will also be an e-book anthology called A Platter of Surprises. And in A Platter of Surprises, there'll be an original story by <coughs> me, there'll be <laughs> a um, Helma story that sets up a forthcoming novel. So if you look at the publication schedule and you look at a future Helma book and it's by somebody you've never heard of, you get to taste their writing style, and this short story will actually set up something in their novel and will tell you what the novel will be. And also, in each platter of surprises, there will be the first three chapters of a forthcoming novel. And it, for the first year, with only Helma out, up until August, there will always be three chapters of a Helma novel. Uh, those of you who don't buy e-books, uh, Amazing Stories uh, magazine will also be serializing the first three chapters of, e of a forthcoming novel nice. at Greenwood Group. Very nice. So you can try before you get the full treatment, and then you can sort of sit there and say, what is this author going to do next? Right. That is great. I love what that's because, one of the things I'm excited about, not just talk about your new setting for the first year, but what you're doing with the Ed Greenwood group. I've never heard of any other company doing it this way. And that's what we want to do. We want the settings to become places that you fall in love with. And, and, you know, we nerds like us, we know about this Star Trek, Star Wars, Middle Earth, you know, there's a setting that you want to go back to and, and find out more and more about. And we do want movies, and we do want TV shows, and we want lots of novels. Both of these gentlemen here, Chris and Eric, have sequels planned in oh, nice. Helma, okay. as well as books in our other settings. All right, that is great. Listen, we're about to have to go to a break. When, when we come back, I want to talk about the setting of Helma and what people can expect. Um, and so I, when we come back, I'm, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to mention one of our sponsors. We'll hit a break. When we come back on Shane Plays Radio, we're going to have Ed Greenwood, Chris A. Jackson, and Eric Scott DeBee from the Ed Greenwood Group talking about Helma, which is the new series launching next weekend on October 31st. Um, also, don't forget, people, you can tweet me at Shane Plays or you can call 501-823-0965 and, and talk with Ed, Chris, and Eric. So, Real quick, Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. First-time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Zach, take us to a break. When we come back, we'll have more of Ed, Chris, and Eric comic book lovers michael tierney's local comic book stores meet all of your comic book needs with friendly service visit the comic book store on treasure hill road in little rock or collector's edition on jfk boulevard in north little rock and don't forget to click on over to the wildstars.com website i personally have been a customer of michael's since the mid 80s and i trust him for my reserve list still today Michael Knows Comics. In addition to being in business for 34 years, he has written multiple columns for comic magazines, is an Overstreet Price Guide advisor, and publishes his own comic book series, The Wild Stars. Trust me, these stores are run by a comic book lover for comic book lovers. Remember, for all of your comic book needs with friendly service and to get your copies of The Wild Stars, make sure to visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock or Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock and visit thewildstars.com to learn more. Chapman Service is offering for a limited time up to $1,000 trade-in on your old heating system or 0% financing for up to 72 months on a new train comfort system. Call for your free personal estimate. Do it today. Chapman Service. All you want in a heating air conditioning company and nothing you don't. 
Did you know that your business can provide its employees with the same benefits packages as even the largest Fortune 500 companies, often at no direct cost to you, the business owner, and while saving money at the same time? If you've always thought that you would like to offer those big company benefits to your employees but thought that there was no way, let our team at the Makeham Teague Agency come by and show you how it can be possible and how simple it is to put into place. We offer major medical and group and individual plans, on or off exchange, dental and vision, life products, cancer, accident, and more. These benefits create that ever so priceless commodity known as loyalty. And yes, we are ACA certified. We even offer these same benefits on the individual basis if you're just a one-person entrepreneur or making things happen on your own. Give us a call today at 501-838-6827 to schedule your no-obligation on-site consultation. The Makeham Teague Agency is serving all of Arkansas and surrounding states. 501-838-6827. Give us 1% of your trust and we'll earn the other 99. Hey, welcome back to Shame Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. Call a number is 501-823-0965 or you can tweet me at Shame Plays. Once again, that's 501-823-0965. We have on the lines right now, we have uh, Ed Greenwood. Yes, that Ed Greenwood. Uh, Chris A. Jackson and Eric Scott DeVee from the Ed Greenwood Group. And we're talking about a new uh, series, uh, fantasy, or an urban horror, modern horror uh, fantasy series. Uh, I'll let them describe it better here in a second. That, uh, that is kicking off next week on Saturday uh, called Hellmaw on, on Halloween, appropriately enough. Guys, what I'm going to do here real quick... Uh, there, there's a YouTube video that kind of sets the tone for this. If y'all don't, Ed, are you okay if I play that real quick? It's about a minute long. Sure. Okay, yeah. So here's here is the audio of the YouTube video uh, that kind of introduces what Hellmaw is. This world is not what you believe. This world is not ours. It is a prison. It is a battle zone. It is a feeding ground. You are the food. This world is not what you believe. It is a hell maw. All right, so that was that's the very atmospheric sort of teaser trailer for Helma. Um, so I guess you know we've talked a little bit about the Ed Greenwood Group's approach. What I'd like to do in the, in the time we have left, we have about eight minutes or so. Radio goes so quick. One of my favorite things to say is time is a predator that stalks us all our lives. But I'd like you guys in that time to give me as much as you can about the meat or the atmosphere of the setting itself. Uh, okay. Wow, I'll okay. jump in then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jump in. Yeah, I should have said okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, it's our modern real world. It can happen anywhere in the world, but the first few books are in North America, and it's usually the experiences of normal people, people like us, when we encounter demons among us. And the demons can shapeshift to look like humans. They have special powers, but they usually usually can only use those powers when they're within arm's reach of you. And yes, you are the food. I I should warn people that these first three Helma books are probably not suitable for children. Okay. Um, They are also very different from each other. Um, I would say Chris's book is far uh, gentler than either uh, my book or Eric's, but Helma novel can be anything from a, um, a demon loves you story to a demon tears your face off story. Um, some of these demons want to get back home and they want to drain life force to do it. Some of these demons want to rule earth. Some of these demons want to become criminal gang leaders. Some of these demons uh, just want to make lots of friends. So there are going to be all sorts of different stories as Elma stories. That's interesting. So uh, now when I was reading up on Helmoth, I saw something from you where you clarified that these are the D A E M O N demons. Yes. Okay. So are they are they just 
uh, creatures from another realm or are, are they spiritually demonic as, as, as you know, we might think in our, uh, uh, Western thought. I mean, like what, it, or, or are we spoiling anything if we go into that at the moment? No, no, we can, we can say that, that, uh, demons are creatures from another world, um, that is linked to this one from time to time through gates. They, some of them have horrific forms you know, with horns and teeth and, you know, all that stuff, but um, it is a mistake to view them as having anything to do with a real-world religious... You okay. know, that these are not devils, okay. and these are not demons without the A, D-E-M-O-N-S. They are not inherently evil. What they are is um, selfish, greedy, and they view us as cattle. In the same way that we see nothing wrong with growing beef cattle and uh, slaughtering them and eating them, they see nothing wrong with using humans that way. They know humans are intelligent. Um, they make use of that. They exploit that. But they just don't think that we are creatures with the same rights as they have. So we can tell those sort of little satirical stories about what it is when you exploit somebody else or belittle somebody else, because that's what the demons do to us. But they are not all serving anything. There is no Satan here, I and see. they are not organized. They are all on their own. They, well, sometimes they're in little cliques and noble families that, that have feuds with other families, you know, the Hatfields uh -huh. and the McCoys. Right. But, no, they are not an evil, inherently evil force, but most humans would see them as inherently evil in the same way that if you didn't know what a car was, but every single car that you saw ran over you, yeah. you probably think cars were evil right i get you all right so is there and i want to uh real quick uh i want chris and eric i want to get to y'all where we've got about three or four minutes left here at the most but i do now it sounds like there's individual stories but i'm is there an overarching story arc that'll be going on for the entire or will it i mean is there it sounds like there's there's individual stories that'll be unfolding but is there an overall story that unfolds as well I think I think Ed's designed it so that we have uh, a, a basic story arc for each year. Is that correct, Ed? Pretty much. We're up to eight story arcs now. Yes. Okay. Right. That's eight years. And wow, eight years planned ahead. You guys are not messing around. Right. And oh yeah, yeah. Ahead. It's kind of scary actually. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and what I'd like to point out is Ed said, you know, that, that these stories are varied. These stories are very different from one another, and I think that's a strength. For this for this world is that um, if if you don't like what one author is doing with this world, don't write off the whole world because because the stories are very very different. Um, you know, mine's kind of a more sciency um, murder mystery kind of story, and um, and Ed's and and definitely Eric's are a lot more graphic and in your face kind of thing. Yeah. So Eric, tell us a little bit about about your book that's going to be part of the initial launch. So, yeah, real quick, my book is called Blind and Justice, and it is about a, well, to spoil it just slightly, it is about a uh, FBI agent investigating the string of murders that turns out to be at the hands of a demon who is mm, going around and dispensing vigilante justice. It's that sort of story, and it's um, it, it plays around with some of our modern concepts of good and evil and uh and, and kind of evil in the mundane things that people do to each other. Some of them are really horrific, but they're all very normal. And that that's really scary to me, as opposed to fantasy evil of, ooh, I summon darkness and take right. over the world. It's more like I abuse and exploit people and don't care about it. And that, that's, yeah, so that's what I'm going after. All right. Well, I can already tell you, based on what Ed described, what you, you described, if I were to write a book in this i i think uh, i would uh, i i instantly thought i would i would make a demon who um who's who starts seeing the humans as more than just cattle and the friction that that causes with him trying to get his fellow demons not to eat them so uh you know that that was just what immediately sprung to my head I, i'm sure that some of the other authors have, have had that same thought i love i love that kind of friction um but anyway, so, so so you would you would be the vegetarian in Texas, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know, as like the champion of the of the humans or whatever. So, uh, all right, and now and then, Ed, your book, Your World Is Doomed, basically kicks everything off and it introduces the whole concept, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. 
before I have to ask, and then I'm going to let you guys know where people can find these books, and then we have to wrap. Unfortunately, are there demons on Earth before your book, or is your book where they show up? Or do oh you no, even... there are demons who have been here for thousands of years. Okay. Um, who knows if you know some of the evils of the past, some of the decadent like Roman Ooh. Roman emperors, and Vlad stuff, the Impaler. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. And, and the Hitler I mean, thing. You know? Ooh, I'm getting little shivers thinking of where you could take all this. Good oh, yes. stuff. And there are going to be graphic novels too, and mm. the equivalent of choose your own adventure books. There's going to be everything. All right. And I'm working on an October 2022 Helma novel right now. All right. Well, I hate to, <laughs> guys, I hate to do this. We're already pretty much out of time. Can you take about 30 seconds and let us know where people can find these books and graphic novels and et cetera once they start releasing? Oh, boy. Well, the easy way is to go to onderlibrum.com. That's O-N-D-E-R-L-I-B-R-U-M, onderlibrum.com, which is the home of the Ed Greenwood Group, where you can see all of our books. And you'll be able to order through there. You'll be able to order through Amazon. All of the novels will be e-books, hardcovers, and trade paperbacks. All of the platters of surprises will be e-books only. Um, there will be uh, enhanced versions of them available through Trapdoor Technologies. Um, there will be uh, versions uh, available in uh, Brazilian Portuguese right from the word go. Um, for From, uh, oh, I'm going to get this wrong now, um, Conticas da Magia uh, mm-hmm. in Brazil. And we are going to be stretching worldwide. Okay, great. Listen, people, be on the lookout for the Ed Greenwood Group and Helmall. Ed, Chris... Eric, any of your other offers, y'all have an open invitation to come back on. I'd love to have you on each year as you kick off your new, like, you know, Pony Island Adventures and after that or whatever. You have an open invitation. So stay in touch. I'd love to have you back on. Thanks so much for being on today. I wish we had more time. Uh, and, and good luck with Helmaw and the Ed Greenwood Group. Remember, folks, that launches next Saturday, uh, Halloween, October 31st. Going to wrap up the show real quick. Got a tweet of the week. Alex Fox. 1723 said we don't have hoverboards says everyone from their millimeter thin connected to the global network affordable magic light device uh don't forget next week we've got jeff d and jeff herman of villains of vigilantes don't forget about the temporary station change we're also on krypton radio kryptonradio.com